when you look at leaders now in football, and again, we talk about the leadership model that you came from, let's pick out some people that are perceived leaders or supposedly supposed to be leaders. Mm -hmm. and let's pick out one of your perhaps favorite hobby horses, Manchester United, and say Bruno Fernandes as a leader. No, he is obviously not a leader. It, it, it's as plain as the nose on the end of your face. He is not a leader. His attitude when they went 3-0 down, down at Liverpool was appalling. I agree with you. Uh, that That's not leadership in any shape or form, the way that he reacted to the adversity. The way he appeared, he denies it and says that I wasn't looking to come off. But the whole kit and caboodle from I'll pushing lines through at the time, to, Simon. You would not want to be in the trenches with him. Simple as. What can you imagine that Ten Hag is thinking, as a former manager, by doubling down with the whole world? Everyone looked at that, that Bruno Fernandes situation. And everyone came to the same conclusion. Everyone came to the same conclusion, except the fellow that actually makes the decision. I think that is another example of modern management. Uh, the, the tail wags the dog in football today. And there's only one one club in the country right now where that doesn't happen. That's Man City, where the manager is all powerful. But the manager is is the, the boss in name only. He's, he's thinking Fernandez is a good player. Fernandez, you'll see, be a star when they're on top and they're on the front foot. And he's creative and he is a real talent. And he is a real talent. Mm -hmm. But he showed a side to him that day at Anfield, which is very unattractive. But this the manager man you have right now is willing to overlook that because he knows going forward that he will win him games, he'll score him goals. But in the in his head, the manager's head, he will know the first time I come up against a really difficult situation again, is he going to go missing? And I think the manager knows the answer to that. When you look at leaders, again, go back to the leadership thing, and you think about the leaders that you may have played alongside, and you look at the situation today, can you pick... I, I find it difficult. I look around and think to myself, obviously, having owned a football club, and it was in the Premier League for a short period of time, but notwithstanding that, leaders at every level are leaders, right? Wherever they're playing in the Championship or playing in the Premier League, you want your guy on the pitch to be something a slightly more significant. When you look around, who do you naturally gravitate to and think... Well, I'll tell you what, if I was managing now, I'd have him. I'd have him as a leader. I'd have him as my captain. Mm -hmm. I'd have him in situ. But if you were picking leaders, who would you pick? You have to search for them. Well, this is the, this is the problem. I mean, right now, the first name that comes to mind, coming to the end of his career, James Milner. You know, a proper lad. I worked with him. Um, Jordan Henderson? Uh, um, not, uh, we've gone straight for Liverpool player, have you? Yeah, well, no, that was, trust me, that was the first thing, because as you were asking the question, I was thinking Man United. And then I thought Man City. They obviously have some some leaders, Man City. But it's not... We'd have picked company, wouldn't we? You'd yeah. Have, you'd have picked company, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bernardo Silva would be a leader in, his, in a very different type of... Um, De Bruyne, possibly, although he said something during the World Cup which he shouldn't have said about his teammates yep. who felt they were past their best. I mean, City over recent history must have some proper leaders. But, I mean, this is a sort of layman-esque expression, Graham, but I would have thought that you're, you would have alighted upon the sort of bite, bollock and bark merchants. No. But in that sentiment... Well, I you, wasn't you, that. What? I wasn't that. What? You, if you had any of my contemporaries, any of my teammates in here, I was not that. I didn't growl at them. Just the opposition? Yeah, I saw them as enemy, but my, my own teammates, to a man, they would say no. What, not didn't show at them, well, didn't grow up. That's, that's an interesting one, Graham, because as a manager, I would pick you as having that attribute, as someone that would have very strong About, words to say to players. And I'll give you an example. Let's say I wrote about him once that I would strangle him with his own tongue, Craig Bellamy. <laughs> but you had a proper situation with him, didn't you? I'm manager of Newcastle. We played, um, we're at Charlton in the Premier League. I think we're winning 2-0. They make it 2-1. Super Sunday game, pouring down the rain. I make a substitution. Around about 80-something minute. Um, and the dressings were down to the left. The dugouts are up further up the pitch. So I'm concentrating on the game. Craig Bellamy's coming off and he, and he, and he said something the cameras got picked up very easy to, to um, lip yeah. read. So, we end up getting the result. I think one of my my um, staff has said, by the way, when you took him off, he called you. I said, that's not a problem. Yeah, yeah. But they've got the result. Not a problem. So on the Monday, they're off on the Tuesday. They're in. I said, let's have a meeting. Let's talk about, you know, just a quick chat about the weekend. So I'm sitting on a stage in the meeting room at Newcastle United's 
training ground and Craig is sitting in front of me. I mean, he's not three rows back, he's straight in front of me. And I was talking and I can see him shaking his head and I'm trying not to look at him, not look at him. And then in the end, I just had to say, Craig, what is it I'm saying that you're not agreeing with? And before I got a chance to speak, I'd taken a step towards him and then I told him three different things that I wasn't happy with. The last being, and it was, by the way, you told me to whatever do yeah, one on yeah. Sunday. And by that time, I've got my hands on him. Now, that's not, it's not something that um, I've ever done before. But I think Craig, would, would, if he was sitting, he would admit, and he has admitted, um, both privately and publicly, he was a difficult boy to deal with. Mm. But he was a fabulous little player. Yeah. He, he, was, he, was, he was a fabulous player, but he was a pain to ask to deal with. Yeah, he surprised me once because I was out in London 10 or 15 years ago and I'd written an article in The Observer and I think it was about the Newcastle situation and the players and you can speak to it far more than I can because you were there. And I think Bellamy was causing mayhem and I'd written a, an article saying, you know, if this little played for me, I think I'd strangle him with his own tongue, which is mm -hmm. the anecdote I just said to you earlier on. And I, he walked up to me in um, in a hotel bar about two or three years after I'd written the article and I thought, this little sod's going to have something to say for himself. And he really surprised me because he turned around and said, I read that article, it made me think and I'd love to have played for a chairman like you that had the balls to say things that others people wouldn't say. So it surprised me. Do you think perhaps Seth Bellamy is mellowed over the years? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. He wrote a book, and I think he was he was full of apologies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he was a talented boy. And I, I can remember it was the first time anyone ever said it to me. I need you to take me to the next level. And he want, he wanted to improve all the time, and I'm not sure. You know that that has. Do to you think come footballs from... are worse? I, I I've never had a problem as an owner. Never had a problem. Uh, your mate Trevor didn't deal with a situation once upon a time where he brought a confrontation on the dressing room with a particular player, Clinton Morrison, called it on and didn't deal with it, and the dressing room was lost from there on in. I've never had a problem with managers. There's a language of football that's slightly different to the rest of the world, and people don't like to accept it, but I think it's still there and it should still be accepted. There's a physical sport, and every now and again things get a little bit emotive. It's a visceral reaction. Do you think sport, or football, football specifically football, is worse off or better off for the ability to managers to be in a dressing room and every now and again, pin a player. Let me tell you why it's worse. There has to be a, there has to be a leader stroke yeah. boss in every business. If you imagine a scenario where you as the manager walk into a dressing room with 20 guys and one of your players is just not at it for whatever reason and you're digging him out and you're saying harsh things, never mind getting hold of him by the scruff of the net, but you're digging him yeah, out. Yeah, you're his mind. You're, you're falling out with him because he has such an opinion of himself which is exaggerated today, far more than when I played. Players who are average players are on yep, X amount of X week. Amount of money, yeah. It gives them a great deal of, of independence and belief. And they generally have yeah. an entourage yep. and who, who are blowing smoke up their backsides all the time, telling them how wonderful they are. Well, I use an the expression. media don't get after them either today. I use an expression, I used it in conjunction with a manager over there. They're getting paid F off money so they can tell everybody to F off. Yes. Right? It's that kind of mentality, isn't it? Exactly. But they, they're beyond criticism. And uh, maybe touch on that. So you go in, you dig him out, you fall out with him. You've just, you haven't just fallen out with him. He, he tells his You've mates. You've fallen yeah. out with three or four other people in that dress, at least three or four other people. Collectively, they might be worth 150 million quid. What, what, that goes on for a week. One of them will speak to his agent. The agent will leak the story to the to friendly press man. He's lost a dressing room. That old chestnut comes out on a regular basis. That's the end. Then the, the manager the, is... Answerable to the chairman, the chairman thinks, wait a minute, that guy's no longer worth 50 million, he's only worth 25 now because he's not on the team because the manager's parked him up. You're vulnerable. <laughs>